Hello, people. Uh, this Hi, time everybody. You should hear us. Please let us know in chat if you can hear us now. Or if you can't. Yeah, and if you can't, uh, please also, also let us know. Yep. Um, so we'll just quickly wait to get a confirmation. If people can see us. I, I think quickly waiting is something that is very hard to do. Yeah, sound is yeah. on. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sound is on. Awesome. Nice. Okay, so now we do the proper introduction. Uh, hello, people. Uh, welcome to this week's uh, Dark Orbit Developer Podcast. I'm Flips. I'm one of your community managers. And with me tonight is Sergey, a lovely lead game designer. Hi, and everybody. It's been a while, but I'm back. Yes, uh, he's he's not dead, as some of you presumed. <laughs> oh, even that was a version. That's yes. nice. That's uh, nice. People were so worried. People awesome. were so worried. And uh, later on today, uh, also joining us will be uh, Phil, our lead narrative designer. And he will talk a bit about uh, what narrative design is doing and how, well, the Dark Orbit story is currently developing and what he's doing with that and what the plans are. So, yeah, but first of all, today we're going to talk about um, the process of game development because uh, a lot of you people actually won't uh, or wanted to know what we're doing. Um, like how a game is made in a company as big a, uh, as big as big point and yeah we're here to give you a little insight um, tell you how we do things at big point and what the common procedures are more or less and uh, yeah as always you can ask questions in chat please make sure to type a Q and a column and um, then our lovely moderators in chat who are already Busy bees will uh, filter that out and uh, forward those questions to us so we know which ones to answer. And I'm gonna go over to the couch now and then we'll get ready. Okay, so um, the, uh, the, the, the whole idea behind this uh, kind of like exercise is to just to give you guys a bit more of insight as to how everything is, is working here. As, and so that you might get a better understanding of like why specific things are done in a specific way like how do we make decisions and so on we did get, get into that earlier but at this point we feel like more and more clarification is needed and some some people might have i kind of like might it, it might be easier for some people to to realize or to understand why this or that is, is done or not done, if, if you know better of, of like how exactly this stuff works. So yep. that's why we want to, to share some of those insights with you. Cool. Um, also, over the course of the stream, if you feel like the audio is not in balance or something, or we should talk louder, make the music uh, less loud, then please also let us know. We have music. <laughs> we have, we awesome. have music. Awesome. Uh, everything now seems to be working in the audio department. Okay. Um, so yeah, before we get into the questions, uh, let's start off with some game theory. What do we what do we do at Big Point? So I guess we'll start with the company itself because it's easier. We have a lot of different game teams here, so it's not just Dark Orbit that is being developed here. We have Farmerama, we have Sea Fight, uh, we have our lovely Live Games team that uh, that maintains a whole range of games. Yeah, then we have also Dragon Sang, yeah. and the, we have a whole range of. Um, new games which we kind of like haven't announced yet but there is a lot of stuff uh, there is a lot of people working on those mm -hmm. things so yeah the, the company is because this is basically like divided into a few uh, big projects or smaller projects which all are working more or less independently um, and each project is basically like making most of of their own decisions like what to do with the game how to move forward or how, how do we develop it and so on and there is a bunch of other departments as as as, as you would imagine in any company obviously there is uh, our lovely services departments or i don't know how to say administrative departments that would be yeah. um people who take care about us yeah uh, hr accounting exactly. and so on but there is also uh, a lot of lovely people who are engaged in making sure that every game that we release uh, is accessible in, in, in a sense. So there is like a big IT crowd that makes sure that all the servers are reachable, everything is working smoothly. There is a lovely localization department that yep. makes it possible that 
every one of you can read uh, our texts and uh, other materials in, in your native language or the language that is as close to your native as possible. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, of course we have satellite offices in different regions as well. So we have one in Berlin where the Drakensum team is uh, working and also in Lyon where um, Hocus Puzzle is being maintained from and where they yeah they do mostly mobile development yes. Yes. and yeah so that is big point as a company um now uh, within the game team we're also not just one big clunk of developers we all have our own certain fancy job titles and sit in our own departments um so i guess we'll go top to bottom well, that yeah sense? i mean you have I guess everybody or everybody who is watching our streams or everybody who is uh, joining our streams every now and then have uh, seen our producer. So that would be uh, Sean and he is the main person responsible for the whole project about everything that goes on, like how do we do things and where do we uh, put the emphasis and also responsible for everything like promotion of the game and so on and so on. So it's, <clears throat> it's basically the... Um, the, the main person and then there is a group of uh, so in the game team there is a lot of different departments like there is a like a game design it's my department that is uh, basically responsible for coming up with all the designs and we basically do more or less like engineering or arch architecture like we, we think of okay how the system would look like how the, the UI would look like what 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 would it do what would the, what would be the balancing and so on mm -hmm. then there is a art department they take care about that everything looks awesome yep. and whatever we come up with is, is everything fleshed out in actual models and ui parts and so on and so on the um then then there is a tech department obviously like yeah. there are several teams within that each one working with one specific um kind of like direction or yeah. one specific uh, language environment yeah. or language like there is a, a php php department <clears throat> there is flash department there is java department and then of course <clears throat> there is our cms yes. and uh, last but not least is very important for us uh, is one of the most important departments for us is basically our quality assurance department the um I don't like there was one question that is relevant to this topic is like how many developers work at Dark Orbit? I excluding the actual developers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I I don't know. I mean, I think it's about somewhere in the plus twenty area. I think. Yeah, twenty five plus. Some I would point, say. Yeah. yeah, so it's 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 more than twenty five people. Obviously, we have shifts like now every now and then somebody. Uh, somebody new joins the team. Somebody uh, leaves the team, and so on. But it's 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 in that area, so it's it's a pretty big team. We, yeah, it's sizable. Yeah, that, and you have met a lot of people from that team already, and we hope that in the future there will be a yeah even more guests, even here more guests on the couch. here that yeah you will you will see more people. Yep. So how 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 things are actually working is that. Let's say there is a there is an idea that we have as designers. Okay, we want to introduce a certain feature, and obviously we don't we don't just go around throwing ideas. We, we need to make sure, like what what my department does, is that if we have a specific feature idea, we need to make sure that it 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 actually addresses a specific concern or a specific problem, or it brings a certain value to to the game. So if we say, okay, we want to have assembly, it would would do this and this and this it would bring us the, the following possibilities and i guess <clears throat> you guys watched the streams where we had a very very uh exciting assembly launch where we had we were talking about different possibilities and while we are getting through that slowly through the year it really opened up a lot of perspectives for us um so we basically make sure that the feature has is serving a certain purpose it's not like oh let's just develop whatever and because it's fun or it's cool the cool and fun is a very big consideration for us mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that that is relevant as well it's not like oh we think i don't know uh giant elephants would be fun but is it relevant and is it, is it serving any purpose is it is it solving any problem that the players have uh and so on so once that 
thing is, is done and basically fleshed out as an idea, then, um, then the, uh, the, the document that we develop, which describes exactly how the system should work, how the UI should look, how, what are the, our, our requirements for tracking of that stuff and so on, goes on for uh, actual developers and they evaluate uh, how much time would they need, what is ex exactly required, what they will have to do to, to realize that, to, to actually implement the feature, like how much UI is needed, how much time for each department is needed. Uh, all that is planned with our project management, so we basically lay out a plan of development, like what has to be done first, what has to be done second, when it's going to QA, when it's going to open beta and so on and so on. So that plan is laid out and then basically it starts um, the, the progress or the production of the feature starts and then we basically follow it closely uh, from, I, I can speak from my department, we follow the production closely because during the production there can be some specific things that arise like we haven't anticipated something mm -hmm. or the thing is harder than we have thought or the mechanic that we came up with and it seemed fun on the paper or in discussion it is not as fun when it's actually in the game so we have to come in and think okay how can we modify this to make it better or to make it more customizable or suitable for us and so on and so on um, afterwards uh, the feature is being qa so it's checked whether it's really so we like there are two things like first we need to check if the the feature that was developed is actually what we actually is actually what we wanted so we need to make sure that everything is up to the uh, design that we actually put forward and afterwards we may need to make sure that it doesn't break mm -hmm. so it doesn't break any other feature or it doesn't break by itself so um the question is there what are the devs doing develop new ideas to introduce new bugs <laughs> We can't even imagine yet. Do they have specific tasks? So yeah, obviously um, that's a funny joke. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> so the the thing is that each and every developer has a, a, an array of specific tasks at any given moment because what we basically have said, even though our team is pretty sizable, the amount of things that we need to tackle or that we want to tackle simultaneously is pretty big. So. As you know, we have plans to develop new stuff and we, we have to fix certain life issues and we always going back and forth saying, okay, for this week we need to concentrate on, on I don't know, fixing these particular issues which are very, very, very severe and that's why we need to postpone a certain, certain other production, then we have to concentrate on that again and so on. But generally everybody has a very good overview of what are they supposed to do in a sense. With the live game, such as Dark Orbit, where there is a lot of systems and everything kind of like is in a very tricky balance, mm -hmm. there might be, there is always a situation where we have always like we are juggling several balls trying to, okay, like there is a new bug that has been discovered, we have to fix it, but simultaneously we have to make sure that the system that we want to develop is being developed or not stalled and so on. Yep. So, uh, that's why the developers switching between tasks constantly create this kind of like a queue. Okay, there is a bunch of bugs that need fixing, but there is the most severe bug that we need to fix right now. Then we need to make sure that the thing that we wanted to do also gets progress. And then we pick another severe bug or less severe, but the next bug in line and fix it and so on and so on. So developers are basically doing that. So they are either working on live issues, like they have done, they have discovered a new bug and they are fixing it. Uh, then, uh, then they have a part, they have a task to develop some specific subsystem for a new feature that we are working on and so on. So that's how it works. Where yeah. is Jörg? Jörg is on vacation. He has the week off because he's working very hard always, so he deserves to take a week off. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, when we're talking about developers, I guess we should define closer. So what we were talking about now are, are coders, uh, because there are lots of people who develop stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I would say game designers are also developers. Yeah. So but de developers, uh, coders yeah. are the people who... When I say developers, yeah. we mainly mean programmers. But yeah. obviously, the art department is also working with tasks, and they have 
a certain amount of stuff that they need to do and they know in which order they're doing it. Game design obviously is working ahead of everyone, but we also developed a bit of content. Like now, as we have been talking about this a lot in this streams, we are aiming to make sure that designers have uh, more and more vital role in content development. And now we have started to do some content on our own. So we are basically becoming developers of a sort ourselves. So in, in, a, in a sense, everybody has no, like has an idea and, and, and knows exactly what he needs to do. There is a plan, it's like long-term plan, there is a short-term plan. But as I said, we're very flexible because we're working in a live game and stuff happens and a lot of stuff happens and we have to react very fast. I yeah. uh, would like to answer that one, like, have you as a lead game designer ever considered of stopping the rollout of a new patch which affects the game mechanics? I seem, I think sometimes patching back to a stable version would be better. So, um, the rollout of stuff that affects game mechanic, yes, I have, and we have stopped a couple of times. We have stopped patches, which we were not sure that they affect, or like we have discovered a vital problem. However, uh, sometimes when we do discover a problem, when we have a game mechanical effect that is not up to our like expectation in, in, in the game, we basically, like, it's not always like we roll back, but sometimes we fix the specific issue within the, um, uh, within, within the new version, effectively yeah. rolling back the changes that we did. So if we discover, I don't know, like we, we are giving two, the reward we are given is too generous or too low or whatever else. Like there was a question about spectrum cooldown. Like if we're going to change that, yeah, it's not like we're not, go we not going to roll back everything, but where we have done a very substantial change to the way the ship abilities work and we hope it will bring more dynamics to, to combats and so on. We have recognized the problem that many of you reported or just said, okay, this makes Spectrum to be very effective. So we are going to look into that and obviously that's not a big, kind of like, it, it's not a big deal to change it for us. So we will just to make sure that the change is, 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 is cool and good enough. And I mean, in general, as we have been talking, like just m as we work more and more work with content, as, as, as we develop more cool abilities, as, as we put out more ships, we have, uh, we will have to step in more often to change specific parameters of specific ships, like changing cooldowns, like buffing some of the ships and debuffing some other ships and yeah. like we just want to make sure that you guys are ready and you realize and you understand that we are not doing it to like i don't know piece off specific players who like that ship or who have bought the ship but we wanted to make sure that uh the the general like it's it's it's, it's fair for everybody like if the ship is too out of balance we want to make sure it's it's still in in in, in compatible compatible and competitive enough but it's not breaking everybody else's game so yep. just yeah stuff like that will be obviously addressed um <clears throat> halloween info yes we are going to have a halloween <laughs> event and it's gonna we'll, be yeah, pretty cool we'll, we'll we'll let you know yep <laughs> once we're, once we're ready to share um not just yet yes mm. Let's see, uh, has something changed after the Yuzu takeover at Big Point? I would say no. For us, nothing really For happened us, since then. No, no. Well, uh, the development team is unaffected by the takeover. So that's the short answer, and there's yeah, well, not really I, I, much I, I, more to I, it. I would say, like, the partnership allows uh, mainly uh, our games to be more exposed to, to the markets where Yuzu is strong and Yuzu games. I'm more exposed to the markets where big point is strong but for us specifically personally uh didn't change much so yeah not really um could mm -hmm. you there's there's a lot of questions i mean obviously the uh why you add designs for designs why don't you work on bugs gpa lags so you have to realize guys that as we have um, 
a team that is not, like it's not like there is one person and he can only work on one thing at a time like there are there are things that take more time and they take less time and designs are literally easy and then again we're not adding designs for designs we're adding designs for ships that's very important to understand and we just as as we have said we wanted to explore that path to make sure that players have the ability to uh, reflect their personality or customize their ship better without actually affecting gameplay stats. That was the initial idea behind customization and it wasn't actually, it's not actually taking that much time. We, I, I would not, I would, I would not say that we don't work on bugs, JPA lags, and I wouldn't put that in the same row as if they're equally important topics because Bugs is a, is a topic that always is important for us and we, as I said, we always shift between specific things like, oh, there is a new bug, we have to fix it, then there is a queue of bugs that waits fixing and we take the most important things from that queue and fix it, and then we make sure that we still can deliver something interesting for you guys to play with, like Halloween event or something like that. So we, 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 like, we have to shift our attention constantly between making sure that we deliver content and also uh, that uh, we can fix the live bugs pretty mm -hmm. easily. Then JPA is, is a topic that we have discussed multiple times. Uh, the, the, uh, I'll just point to the FAQ that is down below there. Well, yeah, yeah. It's just like, uh, keep in mind that as we said, the GPA is, is a thing that was not really impactful. It was, it was very, very interesting for specific players. We know how many people actually participated in GPA. It's really not that many people. And what we want to do, we want to make a system that would allow a lot more people to participate in such events and that would work for everybody and that would give everybody more chances to, well, to compete. Yeah. And just kind of like bringing up JPA every now and then, well, I mean, we appreciate your interest, but as we said, we are not satisfied with how JPA works. We want to make it more accessible. It's not like we want to make JPA more accessible. We want to make the feature that is like JPA more accessible. So, so yeah, I'll give up my spot now for Phil. So yeah, and here is our narrative designer joining us, it's Phil. But I will just finish then the legs part is specifically interesting because it's a very generic concern guys and it's like it's very hard for us to to get around to 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 to, to kind of like to understand what is actually what needs to be fixed there because if you go in and say oh it's broken there is lags all, all over okay but how like how do would you like us to address that concern like is there a specific place where you see the drop in performance. Do you have any measurements? Do you have any concrete examples? Okay, everything like not everything is broken, but okay, on this specific map at this specific time, there is something going on. Like I, I, I cannot see my I don't know shots or whatever else. Like what do you mean by lags then? Because some people mean that some some events are missing, or some people mean that their picture is frozen or whatever. So. Generic concerns is very hard to address when you come and say everything is broken. Well, like when probably then we can't do anything because we, we don't know what what exactly is broken. We can't fix everything. We, we can only fix specific parts. So, and the last thing before we let Phil talk is very quickly. Yes, we are going to do something about PvP missions. We have already developed a fix for that. We know what to do on the design side. It's again just we have to fit it in between other stuff uh, that that we have to do specifically also live bugs that we have to address and making sure that we can deliver cool content for you to play with. But PvP missions is something that a question that is kind of like we know how to solve it. We just need to make sure that we, we like we fit it in appropriately between other things that we also have to do. And now, our senior narrative designer, Phil, say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, it's really, really wonderful to be here, and it's wonderful to be talking to you all. Um, I've just come in in the last um, two months to take over as a senior narrative designer 
for Dark Orbit, and um, uh, I've already um, uh, got my dust buster out and like <laughs> um, uh, brushed through the the history. Um, and for me, it's really really important to uh, represent the uh, history that's already there in the game, um, and to deal with that um, strongly to like maintain that, but also to add a whole lot more to that, to add more dimensions to your quests, uh, to add more dimensions to what's happening. I've just seen some of the things for the 10th anniversary and I'm really, really pleased because uh, they've, some of the art assets are amazing and they definitely give the feel that I want to uh, bring forward and some of the story that I want to bring forward. And the 10th anniversary is the first time you're really, really going to see me uh, stretch my fingers, legs, whatever you think I'm going to stretch <laughs> and um, uh, and get some story out there. And that story is going to be something that leads into the whole of next year. And it's going to be big. Yeah, so awesome. in, in short, you'd better read those quest texts. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but there's there, there's other things that we're considering. There's other things that we're talking about. Um, uh, we're looking at um, uh, other things for the 10th anniversary because it's obviously a special time for us. It's a, a game that uh, I have a massive respect for. I have played the game um, and I, I, I really want to learn more about you as the community and I want to learn more about what you really, really want from these storylines. And so any type of feedback that you can give us is absolutely fantastic. And it gives a really, really good idea of um of what excites you and what uh sorry <laughs> okay I, I'll, I'll speak more slowly <laughs> what excites you and what really really stimulates you with the story and the background of dark orbit um because there's a lot of really really good background there and there's a lot of really really good factions which we want to develop a little bit further um, and I want to drift back into the past a little bit, possibly not in time, but in looking at certain things that have happened in the past and, and how they've shaped humanity and how they've shaped humanity going forward. Okay, awesome. Um, well, we are taking questions from the live chat and I mean, we will be basically trying to make that, pick the questions that also, uh, our like phil can answer but uh, people say you should be a radio host well yeah yeah <laughs> well I, I think I've, you have a wonderful voice uh so the um um i guess one of the a bunch of like yeah so very quickly through the stuff so do you want to do a configuration save in the hangar uh we talked about this, guys. We want to make sure that it's very easy to change the layer of the loadout from one ship to the other um, the, this is one of the changes that is kind of like stuck because we have uh, we have struggled with a period where we have like a, like a shake up in our development team. Now it's going smoother and smoother. And I think once we make sure that we get through this period of like a lot of, like of, of life bugs that needs to be fixed and concerns needs to be addressed, we will start rolling out those improvements to a hangar system to and to other systems as well. Um, will you increase the artificial intelligence of the pet? Um, we'll think about it. Thank you for your feedback because it's basically something that has never come up before. Well, yeah, if that's a, that's one of your concerns, why not? Um, and do you think on adding a new design for surgeon ship? Thanks for the idea. We see that the surgeon is really popular. So we might add uh, a way to customize that look. Why not? So um, Phil, we were talking about the um, uh, the way that games are generally done, and specifically we were talking about the the way that games are uh, done in big point, and we were talking about like uh, how development process goes on in Dark Orbit. Maybe uh, you could. Tell us about because we mentioned briefly the uh, the support that we get from all, uh, all all other company departments, but the narrative design is specific uh, department which works very closely with us, and those guys also work on other games. So, could you could you let people know 
where does narrative design fit in? What do you actually do then? So, uh, narrative design, uh, not just the people who uh, just write the quests. We, we do a lot more. Narrative design is, is a bigger thing than quest writing. It, 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 it's about the, the whole feel of the product. Uh, for, for this, it's Dark Orbit. Um, I also work on Sea Fight and a couple of other products that I can't talk about just now. And um, and the real, real importance of narrative design is working with design teams and working with the artists and working with the coders to make sure that we get the best things uh, for the events, uh, which which fulfill lots of different desires. So they, they, they fulfill narrative desires. So they fulfill what you want to see story-wise. Um, uh, they fit in with the aspects and the features that have already been developed for the game. And they take into account uh, things that have always gone on before. And uh, I can see one thing which has just like popped up where I'm like, I, I already know about that and, and, and things certain events may be returning in one form or another, possibly slightly differently with, um, with a little bit of a narrative twist. So what I hope to do in the coming months is to, is to work with these guys really, really closely to give you those twists, give you those little turns, give you some new, um, give you some new excitement and some new little buzz and that t type of thing where you're just like, Oh, I didn't expect them to do that. And with my experience working on other games, I have done that before to the point that people have written to me personally saying, oh my God, I didn't expect you to do that. So, uh, and I, I want to bring that to Dark Orbit. I want to bring that to everything I work with on Big Point. I want to make the story exciting because I think realistically, stories become more important in games. And just because Dark Orbit is 10 years old this year, that doesn't mean that we can't make story one of the fundamental core parts of like this game, along with all the great gameplay that mm. you've been expecting. Yeah, so what for us is important is that we, we would like to make sure that, I think we talked about this before, but now with Phil on board, we have a lot more possibility to make sure that whatever is happening in the game is actually happening like in a, it, it, it's meaningful and if their event is is is, is basically like uh, is, is is erupting there is something broken in the universe we want it to be not just the text somewhere we want to make sure that it feels that way mm -hmm. via mechanical means or whatever not so we basically want to work really closely with Phil and other narrative designers to make sure that once we have a story we want we, we want we like to convey the story to to the players it's not only told via text or other stuff it's also told via mechanics or the layout of the map or or the way that npcs even spawn or attack and so on and so on because when that all works in conjunction we we think it creates a lot more interest, a lot more immersion, and, and a lot more value. And we both like see and have all the team on Dark Orbit sees a lot of potential there because we feel that specifically when design is able to work closer on content, we'll have <coughs> a certain amount uh, amount of tools to work with. That's when the the input will be extremely valuable because we will be able to do. Uh, stuff that Phil was talking about more independently and and faster and that's 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 the key thing which which gives you more content uh which yeah. is what we want to give you and I, I i want to give you story but i want that content to be not just be story not just be quests but be lots of other things that you want so that it mm -hmm. it's all encompassing it's for you because uh i'm bothered about how you feel about these things um, I'm bothered about how you, how excited you are about these things and, and what goes forward from here. And it's great because some of the meetings we've had since I've arrived, um, uh, have been 
exciting and dramatic and we've really really started talking about things in, in in fundamental terms so that once those fundamental bricks are built for you then uh you will see the change it won't it won't be overnight it takes time to slowly uh, sort of move to mm -hmm. this thing but um uh i've just seen a question for me about the next the new st next storyline uh new missions so uh 10th anniversary so uh look forward to winter because that's when they'll start coming in i've already done some of the text that's gone into the game yeah. um uh so i've i've already been working on stuff but but winter's the first major line that i'll be taking control of i'll be um uncovering what's really really been going on um and we'll end on a on a winter surprise shall i say <laughs> yeah so it's um, gonna be good now one question for me uh, there is a bunch of questions i will just merge so first merge is uh, celebration and anniversary event yes we want to do a lot of different things as well for 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 the for inside the company and for you guys and we obviously will have a celebratory twitch probably i didn't pronounce that word correctly but never mind. <laughs> the um and the, the the other question that i've seen before about the tour on big point building i think we might consider that for our anniversary uh, video something we will have to see what exactly and uh, where are we are we doing an anniversary video sergey no oh well. no <laughs> no <laughs> So yeah, uh, the um, the other thing is that cooldowns and uh, rebalancing for specific ships. Yes, we know about Spectrum and our lead uh, lead uh, our main combat designer Hobio is now looking into that. Uh, I, I, I guess if you watch the streams, you know him as well. Yep. We'll be looking into I guess Spearhead and Citadel as well to just like that stuff will become common practice. Just get used to that. We'll be looking at abilities and ships ever since we have started we will try to make sure that they come into balance and so on the um, other thing that i wanted to quickly answer is um, the manor hunt event uh, there is something that you would like to look forward for i will not tell more but the main thing that the manor hunt was kind of like abandoned was that we wanted to make sure that it is more accessible to lower level players most of such events are very hard to do with uh, if you have a relatively low experience or not that awesome ship or not that awesome equipment it's like uh, you have to reach the demander you have to shoot it you have to survive there you have to get certain reward just want to make sure that it's more fair to every everybody else um then uh, what else was there the palladium map yeah um well good point in a sense but again we would like to make sure that we act upon people who get uh things via cheats rather than make sure that everybody else gets as much so it's it's just a balance of things where we have to see if that anyone is cheating it doesn't mean that everybody should be allowed to cheat or everybody should be allowed to i don't know break the game with a specific thing so we would like to look into cheaters more and and botters in in in, in, in like uh, specifically but uh, the palladium map rework is something that we as designers at least have on our table because we'd like to have to make it just more interesting and more engaging yep. um uh, i'm gonna quickly take a question from sure. earlier um specific oh, well i'm gonna give a quick overview because there were a lot of questions about current bugs so for one, uh, the CBS thing, yes, we are aware of this and we are working on this. It's been kind of a pain though to nail it down. Um, it's it's not an easy uh, an easy thing to fix. Um, the other thing are the drone formations and the um, yeah the basically the other persistence uh, bugs when you change maps. Uh, all of these are currently being looked at and are being fixed with uh, critical priority. So that is like our second highest priority and every we, we only have blocker above and we rarely have any blocker tickets. But uh, yeah, so they are critical right now and we're looking at them actively because these are, as all of you guys remark, really frustrating to deal with. And um, 
yeah, we're, we're on the case. Don't uh, worry about that. In in to one of the questions about how far am I into creating the new quest lines um, uh, on the whiteboard behind me, which you would see if we were doing a video for the 10th anniversary, Sergei, but I, mm -hmm. I, but yeah. you just said that that's not going to be the case. Um, uh, there is a big arc which says 2017 and there's a lot of bits on that arc um, and there's going to be a meaty, meaty quest line through 2017, um, which is going to tie a lot of things for you, for you people together. Um, in a great way. And there was also a question about the old quests not finished yet. Will they be removed? Uh, no, it's it's my intention to respect the the core of the story that has already been placed in the game and to just add to that. And I think you'll enjoy what I'm going to add. Yeah. Pretty sure. So, yeah, there is um, two questions. Are we thinking about adding new maps? And that basically uh, adding new maps, it comes down to us as designers being able to work with content. And I think we have repeatedly said that there's one of our biggest priorities right now is to make sure that we get tools in place that allows us to do that. We will have to, like, we'll have to work on that very hard because as you have seen, we have a lot of things that shift and we have a lot of things that needs to be worked on as a top priority or as a fire that needs to be put out, like a live bug that needs to be fixed. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> that remains our top priority. Once that is in place, it will be a lot easier for us to consider anything like new maps or new NPCs or new mechanics and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> then there is, a b there is a question about abusers who will get punished. So will CBS user get punished? They had 50% boosters for 50 plus days now. Will the abusers get punished? So I'll be honest, um, we have the, um, there is a very like, kind of like the, 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 there is a very fine line between people who actively exploit the bugs and for people who accidentally stumble upon them and so on. We will explore what we can do to make sure that people who have been exploiting the bugs feel the retribution. That's what I can say. Uh, I cannot just say, you know what, we'll punish or ban every single one who ever touched any abuse or any exploit. In general, we try to, to nail down the people who have been using specific bugs and try to make sure that they feel the consequences because we think that it's what be fair to the people who have stayed, I don't know, honest fair, yeah. yeah it will be fair to the people who stayed honest on the other hand sometimes it's hard for us to to punish people because with like with with the things that okay we have made a mistake like it's our mistake that we made something happen and the people just used it out of their goodwill in a sense we thought that that's supposed to work like that in this specific case with cbs's yeah there was a bug which was a clear bug and there were people who used it to gain unfair advantage, we have to explore how exactly we need to punish them and what should we do so that we, be, we, will, we will be fair to those people and will be fair to, to people who didn't use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen the question, CBS bug is not an accident. Exactly, that's why I'm saying when something like that happens, it's clear that the people were exploiting a bug like sincerely knowing that they are exploiting the bug. In this case, we need to look at how many of these people are there, what exactly, adv what, what advantage did they get? And then we have to consider how can we like make them feel the consequences. That is an open question for us. I don't have a ready solution for you, but I can assure you that we are looking into this and we'll find, uh, we will make a decision of how exactly do we follow up on this and we'll let everyone know. Yep. And then there is a question for you, Phil. And there is a question for me. So the importance between stories and quest, um, uh, and and more quests like a low map with great stories. So uh, we want to make more stories throughout the game uh, that suit you. Um, I'm not just here to 
create stories that are um, uh, are continuing, linear. I want to do things that branch and change. Um, I want to do things that are repeatable and are fun to repeat, which will work Mm -hmm. very, very tightly with the design team to make sure they're the they're really, really great repeatable quests. Um, uh, and But maybe even like repeatable chains of like quests which um, uh, build up to something. Uh, something new, something old, something borrowed, mm-hmm. something blue even. Let me see. So uh, does it help if we report heavy abusers to support that have them checked out and forwarded? Uh, in some cases, yes, but we will, like, I think we will put forward the word saying, hey, this specific topic, please report people and we'll give a uh, support, a sanction to, to do specific things, <laughs> specific bad things to the, to the guys. But then again, I mean, that has to be a specific plan of action when we have realized, okay, we, we, we need uh, you guys to help us. Um, to find specific abusers, or we can do that algorithmically, like we, we can... And also, like, if you have an idea of how to def- div- how to de- how to find the uh, uh, the abusers of a specific bug with an algorithm, let us know by all means, because maybe that algorithm really will help us to find and punish find, find and punish the abusers. Uh, do you have plans for challenges that we have? We got missions, but some of the missions you can redo as a challenge. Only this doesn't give a reward. Very cool question. So the challenge in general is basically uh, something that I'm not happy with as a designer. It's it's supposed to be a, a thing that you can repeat multiple times. It's supposed to be a competition between different high level players or maybe not that high level, but players who are interested. The main problem is, of course, that it first it is not ex- the, the, your achievement with the challenge are not exposed. So like you can't like if a player or anybody like if you don't say, hey, check out that challenge. It has a very tiny ranking where I'm on the first place. Nobody will see that. And the second, it doesn't give any rewards. Um, that might be a, a bit more like long term thing, but we really want to rework the challenges in a way that will first will make sure that your achievement in the challenges is exposed. And the second is that whenever you have a challenge and you have accomplished it and you make us to a certain high position in the rankings for that specific challenge, you get appropriate reward. And, and potentially, and just at very, very early stages, we're talking about how these challenges can link into, uh, into into who you are in the game uh, more than they are just now and possibly with some more narrative overturns but it, it's it, it's complex to like move or manipulate something that's already mm-hmm. been in the game for a long time um, uh, but I completely agree with what Sergey was just saying there um, uh, there's a question about making the missions harder so we can have six months uh, to finish it and a good reward instead of a, a, a lot of like smaller missions. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that we can consider as well. It's definitely something that we have to think about uh, the time that the players are playing, uh, what they're really, really getting out of the game. Uh, let's see how these initial missions for like the winter event go, see how people like them and then see uh, what we can do on board that. And um, uh, and of course, I'm in the Illuminati. <laughs> that is that is not a question. That is a that is a joining requirement at Bitcoin. Yes, obviously, like, and I'm a Templar. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! With some with some rivalries. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna wrap up the stream in a few minutes. So if you have any last questions for Phil or for yeah. last Sergei chance or for to me, ask specific questions, which can be answered in a minute or so. Yes, then provided uh, that we both now. like to talk. That's a challenge for you guys. Well, I mean, I don't think we like to talk so. No, we don't. No, no. We we kept silent for for an hour. That's how stream is made up. Okay. Um, Ranking. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think it's a good point. PvP ranking is similar to weekly uh, top uh, experience points and honor rankings. Cool idea. And in general, we would like to look into our ranking system more like there was a, there were a few questions about uh, current ranking like daily rank system well in general i would like to see the rankings that is more meaningful 
and uh, that is like less exclusive so to say like there is a lot of uh, ranks that are not reachable by ordinary players there is a lot of ranks which are not exposed that you just can't brag about and so on we might consider adding pvp rankings as well and in general like the ranking is something that we would like to look more into and, and also to make sure that it does connect to something meaningful like if you have a rank then you will have a uh, then you have a specific title or something to show off. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, then that wraps it up for this week, I think. Um, thank you so much, Phil, for joining us. Uh, yeah, it's been a podcast. pleasure. And uh, yeah, thank you also to Sergey for being here and showing his face. He's he's still alive, people. No no need to worry. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see all of you again in two weeks when we're back with the next podcast. And yeah, hope you all have a great evening and see you in the orbit, pilots. Bye-bye. Ciao. Cheers. Prepare questions. Yes.